Thanks to, to the organisers and also everybody in the audience today as well coming along and listening to this story. We were here last year and talking predominantly about our nickel project, which has suffered through the nickel market and the decline in it over the last 12 months, but we're still holding that and we're still, that's still part of our major part of our story going forward. What I will do today though is talk a little bit more about our other exploration projects as well that we're working on as well uh, in the background. There's a cautionary statement. Please read that at your own leisure. Uh, the company is an interesting company. We've been around about 10 years as a listed company. Um, we've raised money once in that time. That was about just under $5 million. <coughs> we've maintained our shares on issue at about 120 or just north of 120 million shares. Still got $10 million of cash in the bank. We've got about $2.5 million of investments as well. Uh, our Shareholder base is, is dominated by one individual, Kerry Hermanis, who's probably a serial explorationist as well as a nickel bull. Uh, and then we have an institution holding just under 10%. Uh, directors and management sit at about 11% of the register. The rest of it is uh, held by retail owners. Um, one of our key strategies is around managing our portfolio. And what we do is pick up tenements. Uh, if we like them, we'll keep them in the company. If we don't, we'll try and vend them out and predominantly vend them into other publicly listed companies. And this is how we've ended up with this share portfolio that we have, which is um, the top five of those is worth about two and a half, two point six million million today. Um, these are all derived through our team pointing and shooting at a, at a particular open bit of ground, pick it up very cheaply, we'll work it, we'll decide quickly or not whether it stays within the company or we move it on very quickly. We do drop some of that tenure almost immediately if we don't think it's worth anything. Um, if it is worth something, which is the Bali project, which I'll talk about, we bring it in and then we'll start to work it up as a key project within the company. If we can't do anything really with it but we see some value, we will go and talk to the company that we think should own it and we'll basically present a, a, a very reasonable, sensible deal, which is predominantly around shares, no cash, and retaining a royalty if we think that's sensible or not, but letting the other company have a 100% and a free runway on the expiration on that tenure. But this is an important part of our strategy and how we manage our portfolio in the background. Um, we've got a nickel deposit, two nickel deposits, sorry. Um, combined, it's a little bit over 100,000 tonnes of nickel metal. Interestingly, it's got about a quarter of a million ounces of PGEs in that deposit as well. And Rosie, which is the high grade portion of that, has got a combined nickel equivalent grade of about 3.3% nickel. And just put that in gold context, that's about a million ounce gold deposited about 10 grams per tonne. So that's a significant deposit. Uh, unfortunately, it's nickel related right now. It's not a great time in that market for developing that. So we've put our foot on that and we're holding it. We're not spending a lot of money on it, apart from keeping it in good standing, but we're uh, going to keep hold of it and we think that as the nickel market uh, gets better, that will be worth something of significant value. I'll take you through a couple of slides on that. We're, we're leveraged to exploration upside in the background as well. We've got a lot of uh, other projects. Uh, we've cover a lot of other commodities, all predominantly in Western Australia. Um, but we're all 100% owned as well. So there's no joint ventures in there. There's no complicated off-takes or royalties, anything else. It's just a pure exploration play in the background across what we all, which is a broad, broad bucket of future-facing or um, energy transition metals. So we've got everything in there from uh, gold-based metals, rare earths, lithium, uranium, and more recently, titanium as well, which we've, I'll talk to a little bit. Uh, all within Western Australia, though. Uh, just talking about those projects in particular. So the Dukedom project is where we hold those two nickel sulphide resources. Uh, that's just north of Laverton, about 130 kilometres up a, uh, a gravel but well-maintained road, and it's in and, in and amongst Regis Resources gold deposits. So it's easy to access. We can get in and out of there quite easily. Um, and it's sitting on a granted mining ten tenement, which I'll take you through. Bali's our next major exploration project, and we like this from a number of different, different aspects, and we actually originally got into that looking for gold, but it's quickly evolved into a base metals and a lithium play and more 
recently we've found a little bit of anomalous titanium in there, which we're not really sure what it means, but we're going to work that up further. Doris is a uranium and rare earths play uh, on the northern part of the, the Yilga and Craddon. Stevens is base metals, Otways and Walgulin, which are both in application still, but they're gold, copper and base metals as well. But I'll take you through it, a slide on each one of those and just talk to them in a little bit more detail. So the nickel, nickel proposition that we have, and this is what we were as a company 12 months ago, we've now parked this and just sitting on it, but there's 100,000 tonnes of nickel metal, 14,000 tonnes of copper, and 255,000 ounces of PGEs within, within those two deposits. We've proven it to be positive through a scoping study. We can make money. Uh, the costs it, it, or the prices that we used are around what the nickel price is right now. The costs have escalated, obviously, so that margin has been squeezed a little bit. Uh, but as we see the nickel price improve, I think we'll see um, more and more value within that, that two, those two deposits. It's a really simple thing for us to actually keep our foot on. It doesn't cost us a lot of money. It's about $100,000 a year of expenditure, both through salaries and a little bit of on-ground activity. Um, and it's sitting on a granted mining tenement, as I've said before. Just looking at the metallurgy of that, we, we've actually proven through those two deposits we can produce a concentrate. It's very simple. It's a saleable concentrate, so we've um, pushed it to the point where we can show that uh, it, it's a marketable product. We've taken that a little bit further, just looking at the, the battery thematic in the background as well, and put it through what's called a pressure oxidation process, and that, that picture in the middle of that uh, stainless steel vessel is a pressure vessel. Um, you put the concentrate in that with a little bit of water, you bring the temperature up and the pressure up, and then you can push the, the base metals, the nickel and copper and cobalt, into solution. And that's that green liquid in the right-hand side of that slide. And that's a nickel sulphate. sulphate. And then the, the remainder of it is actually an iron residue, which is the bottom picture, that red com component. Now, we can tweak that system so the PGEs can actually report into the nickel sulphate or, or report into the, the residue. And so they're infinitely recoverable, which is where we want it to be. And that's what, why these deposits are so valuable to us. And we think with a rising nickel market, um, they'll be significant. Bali, which is our major exploration project that we've got in our portfolio for now. We've got about 700 square kilometres of exploration tenure there, and we've slowly built this up over a few years. Um, we're about 200 kilometres north of Southern Cross, Bali. To the north of us is the UME Gold Deposit, and just to the south of that is the Penny West Gold Deposit as well, which is the, the main reason for getting into this area initially was around trying to find repeats of the Penny West Gold Deposit. Um, we still think that's alive and kicking that concept, but in the very short term, we've also been focusing on the lithium potential as well. <clears throat> and that boundary, if you continue down that same boundary to the south, you end up at the um, Earl Grey deposit that SQM and West Farmers own, which is a significant lithium deposit. And all the way up through this belt, there is a lithium signature all the way along that contact. And we're seeing some significant lithium fertility indicators, so not, not quite lithium yet, but, but we feel like we're in the right area and we're just around the corner from um, finding something of significance. And all those vectors, to a certain extent, and I'm oh, sorry, I forgot to zoom in on this tenement, uh, are, are really pointing to the south and we've just got a tenement under application which we're a month or so away from getting granted. Um, but I, that's where the lithium vectors are sending us. The gold side of things, we've got historical gold results through this whole property, uh, a couple of metres at a couple of grams here and there. Uh, it's an interesting geological concept. It's actually a stripped uh, weathering profile, so the footprint of these deposits are actually very hard to find, and there's a little bit of transported cover over the top as well. And that's why we believe that the opportunity still remains on the gold side of things. Up in the top right-hand corner of that uh, tenement map, there's a high titanium value, which actually resulted from a rock chip sample from about six weeks ago. Uh, we've, we've just got this anomalous result, 1% tit titanium in a gabbro. Uh, we've got a team out on the ground at the moment just following that up and just trying to understand exactly what that means. Um, it's a little bit of a left field thing for us, but it's sitting out outcropping. It's 1% titanium. It'll probably have some other uh, minerals associated with it as well, we believe. Uh, but we need to do further work to follow that up. 
Um, some of the background of this tenement as well is the base metals and the, and the iron ore as well in the area. Uh, we've done very little on that front. We don't plan to in the short term, but we're keeping our mind open to what could be. Doris, it's a uranium play at the end of the day. Uh, it's got some historical high-grade uranium drill holes into it. We've got our foot on this. Um, we're looking at some of the rare earth components of it, but we'll keep progressing that as we go forward. Stevens is a base metals play. Great, great looking project. Uh, it's got a VMS, or volcanic massive sulphide signature throughout all of it, but it's probably got another overprinting signature of just this disseminated copper um, throughout the whole zone. And that's probably indicating to a larger system that we can't see yet or haven't found yet. But some of these intercepts like nine metres at 1.2% copper, 12 metres at 0.55 is pointing to this higher, higher or larger system at play that we haven't really identified fully. Um, Otways, which is one of our applications. Uh, this is one of my more favourite projects. This is now a month or so away from coming into Grant. We're up and having a look at this uh, just in the last month or so. Some of the historical numbers through here, 64 metres at 0.7% copper, 48 metres at 0.6% copper, and more recently, back in 2020, 43 at 07 copper and 7 metres at 0.75 copper. There's this, this signature all over this property around probably a background of a porphyry copper play, um, but significant intercepts, relatively low grade, but still not too bad, and most of these are close to surface or at surface. Um, and I'm personally quite excited about this coming through and getting into Grant. There's also a background, sort of separate play here around some of the gold, and there's been uh, an epithermal gold occurrence throughout all of this project, and we're getting rock chips around here and some of the historical stuff, up to and including 24 grams per tonne gold in individual laminated gold veins, which are separate to the copper, not associated, but uh, geographical, geographically associated with them. Well, Gulen, this is um, northeast of Meriden, actually closest gold mine is Edna May gold mine. It's about 20 kilometres away. Got some significant gold and base metals sort of signatures in the background. Um, again, uh, still in application, but some of the historical numbers are 96 at 3 grams per tonne silver, 93 at 4 grams per tonne silver, a uh, little bit of associated zinc and lead in both of those, and then some other significant gold background numbers as well. Um, we really like this from a gold and a base metals perspective and just waiting for that grant just to come through in the next month or two. We've got plenty on. We're going to keep working with our nickel project. We're going to just work up some more structural targets on that. Bali, as I said, we've got geologists out on site at the moment and um, working up primarily the titanium side of things, but a little bit on the lithium and a little bit on the gold. Uh, Doris, we've just finished a small orientation survey out there. Um, Stevens, we'd like to actually get more tenure around that primary tenement. So we're working with other parties in the area and talking to them. Uh, and those tenement applications, both at Otways and Well Gulen, are both pretty timely and they're coming through in the next month or so. So look, in summary, we're, we're, we're in good position from a structural perspective with 122 million shares on issue, $10 million of cash in the bank. We've got an additional $2.5 million of investments which we actively manage uh, and really highly leveraged for any exploration success that we, we will have in that portfolio. That's it. Thanks for listening.